talk today. Please welcome Mr. James Avale from Spain. He's going to talk about the LOST project. It's an e-learning environment for security trainers to engage uh, students from the ethical hacking perspective. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, thank you for coming here today. My name is uh, Jaume Abella. I come from Barcelona, Spain. Jaume is James in, in Catalan. I'm, uh, I teach uh, networking, IT security in the engineering school of La Salle in Barcelona. I teach my students Networking, I teach them how to build networks, how to make networks work properly, how to integrate applications in these networks. And we use a lot of equipment in our laboratories. So they learn real networking, how to implement these kind of networks. We also teach them uh, the CCNA and CCMP certifications, certification from Cisco, because we are part of the Networking Academy from Cisco Systems. And I also teach my students IT security. We teach IT security them not from the theoretical uh, way. Okay. Uh, we put them in a laboratory and we train them with, uh, well, virtual labs, uh, real and virtual labs, okay? Everything on, uh, on a practical way, with hands-on labs. I'm also a member of uh, ISECOM. ISECOM is an institute for open and security methodologies. It's uh, a worldwide institute. A lot of people from around the world participate in the development of these standards. And two of the main projects of ISECOM are the OSTEM. The OSTEM is an open methodology for security testers, for professional people. And with this certification, you can get uh, well, with this project, you can get a certification. And the other project is the Hagger High School. The Hagger High School is a project for young people to teach them about security, to teach them how dangerous internet is, how to protect themselves, and to teach them the basics of networking and security. But this project is for teens, more or less, for young people. This is not for engineers, and our students are engineers. For the Hacker High School and for the Austin, ISECOM uses a network, a test network. They use a network so the students, so professionals, can run the tests, do the labs, do the exams against these networks so they don't harm any real environment. Okay. This test network <coughs> uh, was provided by Dream Lab, provided the, the servers and network equipment and is hosted in our university, in La Salle. The thing is that we need people to manage this network. For example, we use our students. We train our students and they are able to uh, manage, solve any problem in the network of ISECOM. And two years ago, we started a new curriculum in our university, and one of the course was IT security. So we thought, we need a network, why not the ISECOM network? No, it's not possible. We cannot use this network because this network is for Austin and for Hager High School. We need a different network. Maybe the same, a replication of this network? Yes, but that's not enough. We wanted something bigger. Not as big as this, okay? But we need something bigger, more flexible, where our students can uh, try anything or experience, any technology, uh, so they can uh, hack anything but without harming any real environment. So this was the starting point of the project. But to develop this project, we need people. OK, we have students. So we took a group of students. <coughs> uh, well, no one of them is here. We took these students, and we started this project. This project is called Lost. Why Lost? Well, students chose the name, okay? maybe because of the Syria, okay, of the Iceland. Lost comes from learning platform for security training. Okay, what's the last project? Well, that's the definition. An e-learning environment that helps security trainers to teach of hands-on technological knowledge 
on security testing and auditing to engage students in the security world, but always from the ethical hacking perspective. Okay, so we teach them to be professionals. Okay, they don't teach them to hack uh, anything from the internet. <clears throat> what do we want with this uh, project? The project is not the network only, it's more things. Okay, with this project, we want our students to learn IT security, we want our students to learn ethical hacking to be able to implement security tests against any real environment, but when they are on the company working, to be able to identify any system vulnerability and determine and apply any solution available. That's what we want this with this project. Okay. <clears throat> so the first part of the project is the network and the management system. The network is composed by several scenarios. So the students go from the first, evolving in the different scenarios, and each scenario uh, gets more complexity. New technologies, okay? They need to implement and use different tools to, uh, to run and do all the labs for each scenario. <coughs> but these scenarios are controlled. No one can access to these scenarios without uh, a login and a password. So we can control who enters in each scenario. And we also have a monitor system that controls the traffic that the students generate. So we can get feedback to the trainer to tell him what the students did. Okay? Remember, all these things are done by, by our students. So we use our students to, in, to include more scenarios, more complexity, more virtual servers in this project. Well, this is part of the network. So, well, the thing is that to implement this network, our students need to know networking, okay? Good knowledge of networking. They need to configure routers, switches, firewalls, IDSs, uh, Windows, Linux, Unix, anything. They need to know about virtualization, virtualizing uh, the host, virtualizing the network, virtualizing the storage. They need to know about firewalls, Windows firewalls, IP tables, uh, the PIX, the ASA from Cisco, any kind of vendor. We also use the different tools. So in the different labs, they use tools like, for example, Nessus, like Nmap, like Snort. And for example, an interesting, very interesting tool, Metasploit. Metasploit is a very useful tool to detect vulnerabilities and try to do the last part of a security test that is penetration testing, okay? All through a very uh, <coughs> automatic manner. Okay, here it is. This is the lab. The, the hardware that is in the, in the network is not, it's not so big because everything is virtualized. Now, probably we have more than 80 virtual servers, probably more than 30 VLANs, okay? And about 10 scenarios, okay? So to run all the scenarios really takes a lot of time for them. Okay. And then we have two groups of students. We can identify two different groups. The students that use the network to be trained, so they are in the course of IT security from, the, from our laboratory. They get access to the network. They have different labs, okay, and they do the labs. And we have a different group of students that probably they are in the last course of the, net, of, of the, uh, of the course, and they help us to develop new projects, increase the network, increase the project. What about the, the learning process? Well, the learning process takes place in three steps. A first step of learning, a second step of building, and a third step of uh, challenge, playing. Okay? Okay, first of all, a period of learning. But learning using the lab, using the network. Okay, all through hands-on labs. We give them... Uh, a workbook with the different lessons, and all the lessons, almost all of the lessons, use this network. So they learn how to use the different tools, they learn the theory of uh, IT security through these lessons, implementing all the time, implementing all the time. What do they learn? First of all, basic. 
basic knowledge, how to run, how to set up a web server, an FTP, an SSH, how to use TCP DAM to capture and analyze traffic, or for example, Wireshark, how to, uh, <coughs> how to implement sockets in different ways, for example, how to use Netcat. Netcat is a very powerful tool, for example, to uh, run a simple server, like a chat server, or you can also use Netcat as a hacking tool okay, to open a backdoor in a server. On the second step, they, you know, they are taught about cryptography, but not the theory, not the mathematics. It's really complex. They are engineers. We teach them how to implement the applications of cryptography, how to encrypt, how to use digital signature, how to use the certificates, how, for example, SSH works. Okay, what kind of uh, encryption algorithms SSH works? How to configure an SSH server? How Linux and Windows encrypt the passwords? Where these passwords are uh, stored? And to identify, for example, what kind of algorithm is, has been used to encrypt this password? <coughs> On a third uh, chapter, password cracking. Password is really one of the weak links in security in a network. Okay. Normally, hackers, if they want to get into your servers, they will try to find, to, uh, to get your passwords. So they implement different attacks about passwords, the dictionary attacks, brute force attacks, or also social engineering. And then basic network attacks. They implement, for example, the ping of death. It's an old-fashioned attack. Probably it's not working anymore in the real servers. It was a very powerful attack uh, 10, 15 years ago in first version of Windows, Windows 95, 98, in all uh, Linux kernels. But they implement, they try to run this attack against our servers, okay? And we have some, a few of them really old. They have to find these servers and try to hack them using the being of death. They also implement, for example, a smart, how to use the broadcast, okay? To get a lot of traffic and send this traffic to a server and collapse this traffic. How to implement, for example, a scene flute, okay? So, uh, Im implement a denial of service on a server, okay, blocking all the socket connection of this server. And also, for example, session hijacking. We take groups of two, for example, and one of the students try to hijack the Facebook session of his colleague, and they do that. Of course, the colleague is in front, okay? And when they do that, okay, we clap him, and he logs out rapidly, okay? This is the main, the, the basic part of the, of the training. And then we enter on the, <coughs> uh, on the process of a security test. We teach them how to implement a security testing. First of all, footprinting. How to get information from your victim, okay, <coughs> without generating almost no traffic against their servers. Only using the information you can find in internet. Googling, for example. Then, port scanning. Now you have all the information you need from these people, and now you try to find all the uh, servers, all the IP addresses, all the ports that are running on these servers. You can use here, for example, different tools like MMAP, HPing, Unicorn Scan, and for example, one interesting uh, method that is called Idola Scanning, okay? that is trying to find the open ports in a server without sending you the traffic to the server, using a man-in-the-middle server. After that, fingerprinting. Now we know all the IP addresses, we know all the ports. Now we need to know the version of the servers, the version of the OS, and the version for each application on each server. When we know these versions, we can go to databases and find if there is any vulnerability in this version of these programs, of these applications. <coughs> this is the next one, vulnerability detection. You can do that on a manual manner, checking the version, going to databases in the internet, or you can use, well, automatic tools like, for example, Nessus. We teach them to use both, of course. And finally, the most dangerous one, penetration testing, okay? Normally in penetration tracing, in 80% of the times, you crash the server, okay? That's why, for example, we cannot use real servers. We use the virtual servers of the network, okay? And in this network, they can crash anything. There is no problem. Normally, the, the, the most servers you crash, the better grade you get. Okay? Not exactly, but more or less. <coughs> and at the end, 
more lessons, firewalls. They learn how to implement firewalls, okay? They learn how to do uh, reverse firewalling, okay? So if you cannot enter to a server to open a connection from the inside, that allows you to enter to the network. Also, how to avoid and detect IPS, IDS, etc. And finally, hacking Wi-Fi. Okay, that's amazing. Okay, using, for example, <coughs> the uh, Aircrack NG Suite tools. So this is the first part of the training of our students. Now they are ready to start building. <coughs> and what do they build? They build a new server, a new virtual server. We ask them to build a server, any kind of OS, any kind of application, for example, a virtual Linux. For example, they can uh, <coughs> get a server with Apache, with a web server, with a database, that database MySQL, with PHP. Why not? Why not? For example, IP tables are firewall inside this server, blocking different ports. But one uh, little requirement. At least your server must have one vulnerability. At least one. And you must be able to detect and hack and exploit this vulnerability. OK? This is the process of building. When all the groups, all the uh, students have the server ready, we take these servers and we move the servers to the project. So we get new servers. Okay, we, ne we get new vulnerabilities. And they have also documented how to implement the exploiting of these vulnerabilities. So we have new lessons. We have new documentation that we can use for people next year, for example. And now they enter in the last part, the gaming part, the challenge part. Okay, yes, what's that? Hack anything you want and show us. Well. Now we do that in a, well, in a subset of servers. Why? Because they find uh, almost 100 servers. Okay? So that's almost impossible. So we give them a small group of servers, 5, 8, 10, and then we say, OK, try to hack all these things. Document and present the results to us. OK. That's a group that takes the training. <coughs> So, but we have people that has already taken this training. And we get these people and then we invite them to explore. Explore new frontiers. We need the people, we need the project grow. Okay? Increase the complexity of the servers. Use new tools. Okay? Probably last month appeared a new vulnerability. Why don't you integrate this vulnerability into the project? So we take students <coughs> that develop their final thesis. Uh, in one of these uh, projects. Okay, well, this is a joke of wars. Okay, for example, one project is in the name of domain. Okay, do you know the movie, In the Name of the King? Okay, well, this is not in the name, this is not the movie. It's in the name of the name. Why is this project, what is this project about? Do you know? DNS, Domain Name Service. Okay, so they explore all the vulnerabilities of DNS. They build DNS servers. They integrate these servers into the Lost project. Okay? They document lessons on how to detect these vulnerabilities, how to exploit these vulnerabilities, and how to solve these vulnerabilities. Another one. Another joke. Guess it. What's that about? It's not Harry Potter. It's Honey Potter. It's about honeypots. OK, so we take one student or several students to analyze the different projects, different honeypots that exist in the internet, maybe develop a new one, integrate this project, this honeypot, into our network. <coughs> and, well, a lot of them. For example, we have the attack of ICMPs. OK, analyze all the traffic. What can we do with ICMP to try to hack, try to exploit a server. For example, the 6 tens, all about the IPv6 version 6. For example, uh, the Great Escape. That's about how to avoid firewalls, how to avoid IDSs, IPSs. The War of Trojans, very interesting project. The students then analyzed all the malware. No, it's not the... Malware is not this one. War of Trojans is about Trojans. 
Okay? Analysis implementing Trojans in a controlled scenario. <coughs> and this is an example. This is an example of a lesson in a video, a short video. This is about how to exploit an old Windows 2000. OK. So what we do here is in the, in the, inside the BLOSS project, we look for a, a set of uh, servers, and we try to find an old IIS web server 5.0. This, uh, this uh, Microsoft uh, version was vulnerable to a very simple attack using only a malform URL. Okay, so using this malform URL, you you are able to execute software in the server. Let's see that. OK, first of all, we connect to the server. We will see that there is a web page under construction, but the web server is, uh, is giving an answer. OK, now we check if the server is vulnerable to this kind of attack. So using a malformed URL, we can see that we can implement a dir listing the main directory of this server. Why is that possible? Because using this URL, we've been able to execute the common, the common line. Common line with a parameter. OK. Wow. If we can do that, if we can ex execute common, for example, <coughs> could we execute, for example, TFTP? Yes, of course. Okay, if you can execute the TFT, TFTP, okay, then we can try to upload a software into the server to open a backdoor. So now what we do is we prepare a TFTP server, our laptop, okay, and we will try to upload Netcat into the Windows server. We use the Freecom server. This is the directory where we put our malware. Well, it's not malware, it's Netcat. It's really used. And using another malform URL, we execute TFTP into the Windows server, telling him to download Netcat. Here it is. Netcat has been uploaded to the server. Next step execute netcat into the server, opening a backdoor. OK, execute netcat like a server in the listening mode <coughs> from a, a specific port where we will be connecting later. OK, so we have already executed the netcat into the server. And now we try to connect to the server. This is the IP address of the vulnerable server. This is the port. And can you see it? We are inside. Okay? We can see that we have the IP address of the server. We are inside, so we have control of the command line of the server. That's very simple. Okay? But it's really old. It's probably it's not longer working anymore. Okay? Probably there is no Windows IES 5.0 in the internet. And if there is exist one, probably will last 30 minutes, no more. Another one. Sorry. The word of malware. We had one student that was interested in analyzing the malware used in the internet by criminals. The malware that they use to steal uh, <coughs> bank identifications, okay, and the information of your visa, your credit card. OK? There is a lot of people that steal this information and get a lot of money selling this information. OK? 
So he was analyzing this software. His problem was to find this software. There is people that implement this software, and he's selling this software, and he's getting a lot of money selling this software. Another group of people buy this software, get the information, and sell the information. Okay, and get a lot of money selling this information. Okay, and other people sell this information, your information, and get a lot of people using your information. Three groups of different uh, bad people. Well, the first one is a platform called Phoenix. Phoenix is a platform that uh, has a lot of exploit kits. The exploit kits are software that uh, <coughs> can use any vulnerability of your laptop, of your computer, in order to introduce, introduce malware in your computer. The other one is SpyEye. SpyEye is the tool used in order to steal these identifications, your credit card uh, number, your login, your passwords, when you enter this into, the, into any server. And this is the victim. The victim is a Windows 7 with a, an antivirus with all the patches, all the patches, but with one vulnerability. And the vulnerability is in the Adobat, okay? In the Adobat version, but with a firewall and with an antivirus. And we get to hack, eh? we are able to hack this, this guy. So the, the user, well, he opens the, he opens the Internet Explorer and connects to the, for example, Caixa Catalunya. It's a bank in Spain. Okay. And, and take a look, take a look at this web page, okay? Because we will see this page later with some changes. Okay, this user is not aware about what, will, what can happen. Okay, after that, this user <coughs> goes to a web page with malware included in his HTML code, okay? Well. In this case, this web page is the page of our school, of our engineering school, but it's not the real one. Okay, it's a copy. It's a copy of this uh, web page where we introduce this malware. So normally, this kind of hackers try to hack uh, vulnerable servers where they introduce this small uh, code. Okay, that allows these people to take you to Phoenix exploit kit, where then you. Without your knowledge, you download these exploit kits. Okay, by now we see that there is no one hacket into the exploit kit. Well, here it is, yes. <coughs> the user has visited the, the web page with the malware, okay, and this malware has connected the user with the Phoenix exploit kit. Now the Phoenix exploit kit is taking a look to your computer and searching for a vulnerability. <coughs> you can see in the web page of the Hackett server the, the malware, okay, the link to the malware. Okay, and this is hidden, you don't see it. Okay. Now we can see in the exploit kit in Phoenix different statistics. For example, <coughs> how many of them have been exploited? Okay. What was this vulnerability? It's a vulnerability from the PDF reader. And once you've been exploited, okay, this software that was introduced into your computer will try to get all this information, your credit card, your login, your password, and send to SpyEye. Okay, we can see also the referee, okay, what page was used to infect you, okay, the country, how many visitors, a lot of statistics. By now we can see in the spy eye that there is no people. We haven't, we haven't any login, any password from anyone. It's a second step. Okay, so now the victim is infected. 
Now this guy goes again to the, for example, <coughs> to our intranet. It, he goes to the intranet and enters login and password. Come on. Well, of course, it's a fake login and password because we're really showing you. Test and test. Login test, password test. OK, and now we already have this information into the SpyEye pl platform. Here it is. We have all the information about the client, and we also have the login and the password. OK. Well, this is dangerous. But if they get your information from your bank, it's more dangerous. So we have the same. But can you take a look at this? <coughs> we use also this malware to inject HTML code. This information, this banner, is not in the web page of this bank. OK, when you have downloaded the information, the HTML code from the bank, the malware has injected you this banner. OK, there is people paying for their banners. So there is, pay there is people getting money okay, with these injections. OK, so we entered the login and password to enter into our, our account bank. And now the hacker checks SpyEye and gets this information here inside. OK. OK. And well, these are only two examples of, of what we do with, with our students, what they learn, OK? They can use these videos as a support to check this, uh, <coughs> these lessons. They also have all this information in the, in the workbooks. And they have the test network to implement these hacks, this test. Oh, it's not working. OK, no problem. <coughs> Final questions. Why do we do that? Because it's, uh, because it's interesting because we are bored and we don't know what to do with them? No. We do that because them to get a good job. OK, so the final, w the final goal for them is to find a job. We want them to be hired by the best companies in IT security. OK, so <coughs> uh, at the end of the course, we take IT security companies, we take these companies to the class, and our students present their results to these companies. So these companies can see who of these guys interest to them. And the result, OK, for example, the guy that develops this project of the world of malware, Frank Ruiz, now he is a security expert. He was hired by Foxit in the Netherlands. OK, and now he continues using his knowledge about malware, OK, about this kind of software, to work for this company. Three more. Alex, Xavi, and Javier. OK, Xavi and Javier, they have started working for Blue Leaf this summer. They presented the, uh, their results on May, and they, they were hired on June by this company. And for example, Omar Pronera. <coughs> Omar is an alumni, but he finished uh, 10 years ago. He came to the presentation. He's working for K KPMG as a security consultant. And he came to see our students, to see what they are able to do. Okay, And now he's interviewing them to, to hire some of them. OK, <clears throat> at last but not least, let me send you a final recommendation. Remember. All we do that is in the ethical hacking perspective. We don't teach them to hack the internet. OK? So <coughs> please, be professional, OK? And don't get lost in bad hacking. 
Okay? That's the message that we send to all of our students. Thank you for your attention. That's all. Okay? You can see if there is any question. <coughs> Okay, uh, hello, my name is Peter, and I'm from Czech Republic, and uh, I have a, oh, maybe, yeah, no, yeah okay. now it's better. Uh, I have uh, already complete all Cisco certificates, CCNA, and I can uh, see that uh, this way is very nice because the, the Cisco is just focused uh, for something, but not uh, so much for the practical part. You can do something when, um, I can now uh, remember the name uh, Pocket Racer. Pocket Racer, yeah. Yes, but um, yeah, you can you can do something on the hardware. But I can ask you, uh, do you want to expand this project to other universities? You know, to uh, show the skills how you're doing. That's the idea. Okay. The thing is that now we are using only the network from our university. Okay. But we are now developing the system to make this lab remotely accessible. Okay. Probably it will take us one year, okay? But the thing is that to offer this uh, project, offer this platform to different universities, okay? So their students can be trained using this platform, okay? We are working on it. We have students working on this part of the project, yes. <coughs> Any more question? Over there. Hey, uh, how long does it take to finish this course? To finish a course? Normally, <coughs> it's a semester. So the three parts of the course, of this course, it takes them four or five months. So two months of training, two and a half, OK? Building the server, two weeks, and two or three weeks uh, for the gaming part trying to hack all the servers they are given, and two days of presentations. So yes, in one semester. The thing is the project is growing, okay, and we are preparing a second part, an advanced part of the course for another semester. One more, one more thing. Uh, did you mention that... Uh, Sorry, I don't hear. Uh, you said that uh, during pen testing uh, that you, you, you want your student to crash the system. But that's not really a pen testing course. During pen testing, you don't want to crash the system. No, no, no. The thing is that <coughs> during the penetration testing, okay, what you try to do is to get into the servers, into the system, okay, without credentials. Okay? The thing is that there is a high risk to crash the servers. That's the thing. And normally, the thing is that our students, when they enter into the servers, normally in 70, 80% of the times, they crash the server. Maybe because it's a, well, uh, it's not a real environment, maybe because it's virtualized, maybe because we have a lot of servers in a real server. In each physical server, we have around 30 virtual machines. Why? Well, because they are not uh, <coughs> real infrastructure. There is no applications almost running on these servers. We don't have 2,000 people working on this server. So we are able to, to run a lot of servers in a physical one. Okay. But yes, most of the time, they crash. Yeah, probably because for them it's more fun. Okay. But, <coughs> but there is no problem. Because when you crash a virtual server, just with one click, you reset the server. <coughs> okay. One thing that we do with the server is that we save the servers in a non-persistent manner. So all the changes that students do in the, in the, in the servers okay, <coughs> uh, are, well, you, you <coughs> are lost. Okay? So when you reset the server, the server runs as the original one. It's one precaution that we take into, into the platform. Thanks. Thank you. A moment. So my question is also related to what he said about uh, crushing, about crushing these this systems. So the people who are doing this training, they crush the systems during the whole training, or they actually manage or they learn how to not crash the systems? Because 
Um, basically, the reasons that you explain why the system is crashing is not actually correct. Most of the time, what happens is you launch an exploit, the exploit is not reliable, so the system crash. So that's basically what happens. <coughs> uh, but you know, in a real environment, when you do a pen test, yeah, you crash the system, you're in a huge trouble. Yeah, <coughs> the thing is normally and there's no rolling back. In a security testing, okay, the penetration testing uh, is optional. You have to uh, negotiate with the company if you have to develop the penetration testing phase or not. Okay, <coughs> the thing is that when you are a professional, when you are in a company, you have a good knowledge, so you know what to do. Okay, in order to do the penetration testing without crashing the server. The thing is that our students, okay, normally the first time, the second time, they don't know what they do. Okay, so they try. So they try anything. That's the problem. But that's the process of learning. Okay, so in the process of learning, they crash the servers. Yes, of course. At the end of the course, they are able not to crash the servers. Okay, because they know that there exist some exploits that work better than others. Okay, that's the thing. O of course, the objective of the presentation is not crashing the server. Yeah. But the experience tells us that in, in the, the first time, the second time they try the presentation testing, 80%, 70% of the time they crash the server. Yeah. Then we ask with them. Right? We, 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 <coughs> we speak with them, we talk, what, what have you done? Okay, trying to repeat the same using a different exploit. Try not to do that, because if you do that, then you crash. So, of course, yes, the, the, the goal, the final goal is not to crash the server, yes. <coughs> oh, thank you. Uh, about the first phase of learning, how are you mm, doing the lectures, uh, like a theory part? Are you doing them live? Are you using some recorded lectures or how, how is that? Okay, so uh, <coughs> the question is during the first part of teaching, uh, how do we teach the, the, the theory, okay? Well, the thing is that there is almost no theory. They have these uh, workbooks, and the theory is or integrated in these workbooks, okay? Or they have to check the internet and check this theory, okay? They only have theory about, for example, how to use Nmap, it's important. It's a manual, but that's 15 minutes. They also have theory about cryptography applications, how uh, encryption works, how the different algorithms are used, uh, symmetric, asymmetric cryptography, okay, digital certificates, hashing, but that's uh, 45 minutes. That's all. All the other things they learn youth with these hands-on labs. Okay, that's the goal of the project. Okay, because. <coughs> During their studies in their university, these students are tired to be in a class listening. They are tired. Yeah, they want practical things. They want to be in the lab. They want to configure. They want to build. They want to crash. They want to hack. They want to do anything. So the class is, today you have the workbooks. Today, today you have to implement this lab. So go ahead. I'm not teaching. I'm not lecturing. I'm just helping them. I'm asking questions and watching what they do. That's the methodology that we use in this course. Any other questions? No more questions? No more questions. Oop. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. I hope you enjoyed it. Enjoyed. Thank you to you for, for inviting me. And that's okay. all. Okay. That's all. That's all. Thank you for coming. So we're gonna have a lunch break now. Go out, enjoy the sun and the food, and we're gonna be back at two thirty with the uh, talks. Um, at two thirty, we're gonna talk about uh, free software cloud data storage, and then Jennifer Perry is talking about cyber stalking. Should be very interesting as well. It is at uh, 3.30, then at uh, 4.30, we are uh, having another woman on stage and she's talking about women in tech. So, see you then at 2.30, back on the stage again.